All right, let us begin. So thank you all for joining in today. We're going to be talking about real-time mode. Um, remember, if you have any questions, just press star six to unmute yourself, or you can send a message via chat. Um, I've opened up the financial planning interface, even though our conversation more recently has been about life planning. Uh, just to show you that if we go to presentations in the financial planning interface, we have run presentation mode, which is PowerPoint, Word, and if we turn it on for you, Excel. Um, and then real time is what we're going to be talking about today. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch interface styles to life planning. And the reason I wanted to do that is just because you can see in this case, there's no menu item for it, but there is a real-time button on this splash page. Um, and one of the things you'll need to be aware of is if you do open up to real-time mode, let's say you're uh, on vision and you want to, uh, uh, sorry, uh, on the vision page, if you want to go to real-time, uh, you'll need to uh, go to the menu go back to the main page in order to select the real-time button. So we'll do that now and we'll uh, go down through the different features today and talk about uh, real-time. So first of all, you can see on the home page that you have the ability to select any solution in the plan to have a look at the overall output for it. You still have the ability to copy a solution, create a new one, uh, and you know edit the name or whatever the case might be. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also want you to notice across the top that we have the tabs so that we can look at output for bill, output for sue, or total. And over on the right, you can also express output in either actual dollars or today's dollars actual dollars, of course, reflecting inflation. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out was that, um, let me just move this to the side a little bit, uh, this whole retirement spending target. What do total retirement sources and total retirement uses mean as compared to, let's say, income assets? So my general prefer preference in looking at a, a plan is to look at the income assets. Uh, net worth can be misleading if net worth involves homes and cottages, for example. Uh, and you can see here the net worth projection looks quite good, but the income assets still good, but they're being depleted, of course, over, over time. And what's included in the net worth in this particular case is a house and cottage. And the problem with looking at net worth, of course, is that you can't eat your house during retirement. Somewhat the same can be said about income assets to the degree that they include rental properties, for instance. So like a house, you can't actually eat the rental property. All you can eat is the rental income that the rental property generates, whereas income assets include um, uh, rental properties. Uh, so it's possible to see a good income assets forecast overall. Sorry, let me uh, close my, um, my apologies, uh, email. Um, you might see um, a good income assets projection overall, but at some point you might actually see the primary account going negative. And that's because the income assets include the value of the rental property, but the rental property isn't throwing off enough income in order to top up the uh, primary account so that all the expenses can be uh, met. So what the retirement sources and retirement uses do is they don't look at just asset values, income assets. What they do is they actually look at the cash sources that all of the income assets produce, less all the uh, retirement uses um, that you have, you know, vacations, general expenses, running the home or whatever. And then they'll show any surplus or deficit. In this case, 
the, the uh, surplus is slightly negative, but uh, given the dollars involved, $4 million, then we're saying that there's 100% coverage. And there is still some, there are still some income assets that are available. So that's the overview uh, page. And you can also see both bills of state output, what's going to the government, what's going to sue, and then sues the state, what's going to build junior and what's going to the government. So it's intended for a big picture overview. And this is where we could have that initial conversation with clients about the five themes. You know, what's the underlying or core theme here? If we go to the compare tab, uh, one of the advantages over the regular output is we have more screen real estate. And as a result, we're able to generate um, uh, output for four solutions. Now, none of uh, some of these solutions aren't uh, uh, at all similar. So, for example, bill-only taxes is just a, re um, a plan for bill-only no sue, no total, no bill junior. Uh, so I'll just select four. Uh, this other one includes corp works and trust works. But I can select any four solutions, and when I click the apply button, then I can apply, uh, or then I can look at output for four solutions. So this is a bit of an advantage in the sense that uh, we don't want to confuse people by being too busy, but instead of just comparing two solutions, we can actually compare four. So we might have the uh, starting initial vision. We might build three more solutions with the client as we kind of progress through, you know, where are you now uh, relative to where you want to be and what are some of the different things that you can do, applying tax tactics, for example, uh, to get from where you are to where you want to be. So we can actually show them a progression of the changes in the overall impact. If we go to net worth, you can see now we have net worth, income assets, annual net cash flow, and the estate output down the left. And we'll see that for the remaining uh, tabs. And then on the right, we have the relative or, or relevant output assets and liabilities. So for example, I can look at assets, double click on homes, see six hour street, see the cottage, double click on, on six hour street. And then I can go in and I can edit the buy or in this case, the sell, uh, change the appreciation rate if I want, you know, edit property taxes, whatever it is that I might want to do. Uh, the other thing is I want to look at these different um, uh, symbols across the top, which you'll see on net worth income assets and cash flow. So you can clearly see that that uh, we've selected the, the uh, donut graph, so that's what we're looking at. But we can also select a table. So if we want to look at something based on a table, we can do that. And then we can also choose the donut graph with a table in the legend. And then what we can also do is look at a graph of a particular asset over time. I know this is uh, a little cramped, but nevertheless, we can see it plus the corresponding table. And then we can look at the basic tree view, which would then allow us to, for example, go in and the client says, well, you know, we want to renovate the kitchen or whatever it might be. So all we need to do is switch to the tree view and then we could add the kitchen renovation in, in this particular case. And then we have the ability to, uh, you know, use the back button. Uh, and then there's also a search feature, which would allow us to go in and search for any particular entry. So uh, it would just be a matter of typing in what it is we want to um, search for. And then you, we can see both Bill and Sue's TFSA, and we can, uh, you know, switch to, uh, in this case, Bill's TFSA. Same concept, of course, for liabilities. So that allows us to have a very complete uh, look at the assets, what makes them up, the specific asset, you know, what's it, its graph look like over time, add entries, do whatever we want to do. If we go to income assets, it's much the same. So let me just go uh, back to the donut graph and we can see it here. So now, for example, I can uh, drill into pension plans. 
Um, I drill down, see Bill's RRSP. Uh, if I select it, I can see the specific different entries, you know, who the beneficiary might be, the contributions he intends to make, et cetera. And then, of course, I can uh, switch to the graph if I want to have a look at the uh, long-term forecast for the value of the RSP so we can see it increasing in value uh, through 2025 when Bill retires and then as he begins to deplete the RSP to finance his retirement, we can see the uh, value declining and ultimately uh, he uh, consumes all of the RSP money uh, by 2042. To me, one of the most important uh, features or strengths is actually going to cash flow because this is where, in particular, we can start looking at our expenses and uh, adjusting those with the client to see the overall impact on net worth or income assets. So again, if we go to lifestyle expenses, uh, I could drill into vacations, for example. The winter vacation is the only one I have itemized. And then I can drill in, see the winter vacation panel. And now what I'm able to do, for example, is I could get rid of that increase in vacations, save it, uh, click the close button. That will then update the financial forecast. And if I roll my mouse over that, in the second last year, we can see that the uh, improvement, because I've cut expenses, is from $249,000 up to $411,000. And then alternatively, what I might do is I might go in and say, well, what would happen if I increased my vacation expenses, maybe not to the $10,000 I had in originally, but let's say to uh, $7,500, and then maybe not um, out uh, until I'm 80, but only till I'm 75, and then down uh, to $5,000, a shorter winter vacation, you know, once I hit 75. So now I'm able to click save, click close, update, and see what the impact is. And you can see in this case, the 411 would decline now to 335,000. Uh, the tactics tab gives us a variety of tactics and it'll depend what's available will depend on whether we're on the total tab or bills tab or Sue's tab. Um, this perhaps isn't as elegant as I might want it to be. It's a little bit busy, but uh, it's just a matter of getting all these different input panels available. So let's go to bill. Um, and we can see now we've got uh, some different tabs here. But as an example, we have the taxes tab. What I'm actually going to do is deselect and I am going to um, click apply so we get rid of any tax, the effect of any tax tactics. Uh, and you can see that um, uh, that actually decreases uh, the income assets. There were advantages in the tax tactics. Uh, we'll go back to cash flow for a second and then back, back here. Um, what I want to do then is I want to say, well, what would happen if we applied some tax tactics with the client? So all I need to do is click the optimize button and then VisionWorks will run through and uh, apply any of the relevant tactics in this particular plan. I don't have any donation expenses or any medical expenses, so we're not going to uh, see the benefit of transferring any credits. But in this case, we can see that the uh, optimum choice is just to split pension income, not to share CPP, and that if we uh, split pension income, we'll save taxes of 44000 but we'll also reduce the OA OAS clawback by 31 for a net benefit of 76. And because we are retaining money, not spending it on taxes over quite a few years, the actual total plan difference is 140,000. We're retaining assets and therefore they're being in, or remaining invested and we're earning a return. So now we can see clearly that that's um, 
an advantage, so we just click OK. But notice then we'll have to click the Apply button, which is down here in the lower right corner, in order to apply that tax tactic. And, uh, and now we can see what the advantage is. The income assets forecast increases from 354000 uh, to 459000 uh, the other thing that we'll just look at is the estate output. So again, we can see uh, Bill's estate uh, or Sue's estate, and we can look at Bill's liquid assets, uh, you know, terminal taxes, uh, estate administration taxes, the shortfall and the residue and so on. So this is more for informational purposes. What does the estate look like? And then uh, if I wish, I can go over here, show the beneficiaries, and I could, if I wanted to, perhaps change the percent allocation for Bill's estate, uh, go in, change who the beneficiaries are, uh, you know, for the different assets. Again, this would be a case where I would most likely want to create a new solution. And then I could, for instance, go in and say, well, what would happen if Bill Jr. is the beneficiary of the uh, cottage that's in Bill's name? This is the standard example we use. And then we can see um, what happens over here, uh, what Sue gets versus what Bill Jr. gets versus what the government gets uh, as compared to what happens if we are leaving the cottage to Sue. Uh, much less in tax, obviously, because of the, um, you know, tax-free spousal rollover. But on the other hand, we can also see what ends up happening um, when uh, uh, everything goes to Bill Jr. and, and what, the, um, what the government would receive. Uh, so um, what I'd like to do at this point, that's a quick tour. I think there's no shortcut other than switching to uh, real-time mode and getting hands-on playing with things and you know going through the the different symbols to see what each thing does and uh, having a look at it um, what i'd like to do then is throw things open to questions so uh, remember if you press star six on your phone then you'll be able to uh, unmute and ask any questions you have Anyone with anything? Michael, where's the best place to do scenarios like retire early or retire later, buy vacation home or not? Uh, right here. I mean, we just have to go to the, the home tab. So let's just take our uh, demo four and we'll uh, copy it and we'll call this uh, retire early. Um, and now we're in that new retire early solution. So what we're able to do is go down to cash flow. We can now go to sources um, and uh, notice we're on the total tab now. So we can go to career income and we can see the two receive a salary entries and then uh, what we're able to do is we're able to go in and, you know, uh, this is for Bill. So let's just retire a couple of years early. Um, and, then, uh, and then similarly, we can, you know, make the change uh, for Sue and do a, you know, or I think this is Bill, I apologize. And we can do um, uh, retire a couple of years early. So they're both retiring at the same time. And then we're able to see what happens. And we can see that this is a pretty dramatic difference. So what that allows us to do is go back to the Compare tab. And then we can compare our Demo 4, which we, we had them uh, working later, and Retire Early. And now we can click the Apply button. We'll just use those two solutions. We won't bother with uh, looking at 4. And, um, and we can see you know, what kind of a, a difference that makes, which is uh, pretty uh, substantial. Is there any way to maximize the VisionWorks screen? 
just if you're doing a screen share so they don't see your desktop? Uh, it, we can't. We actually don't maximize. This is an, an interesting concept. The the um, if you take something like Word, what you really got is a blank canvas, and then you've got the menu bar across the top. And so when you maximize, you're just expanding the size of the menu bar, size of the the black canvas, you know, which holds uh, where you type, etc. In, in our case, things are a little different because we have sort of those more structured forms. So what you can do is you can click this button, which is the standard maximize button. And what it'll do is it'll maximize VisionWorks at this point. But if you're in the software proper here and you click maximize, what it does is it just puts in a, 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 black, a blank background so that um, uh, you know all the other icons and everything else on your desktop aren't seen. Now the only reason I don't do that is because I have you know the message up here about how to join the call. So um, if I maximize, then you can't see it. So, but generally, absolutely, you know when you're working with somebody, definitely you would you would want to maximize um, in order to you know hide all those icons, get rid of the distractions. So just so I'm clear, the the real time does maximize. It's just the, the real time will the real time will maximize because it's that form that's just being expanded, not not dissimilar, if you will, to the word window. You know, it's just uh, the canvas with with uh, uh, the word window. It's just the canvas where you type, and then the then the menu bar. And here we're able to maximize it. That it works okay in this case. But it's a little different in in VisionWorks proper. Looks great. Thank I you. Suppose we can, I suppose we can leave this maximized. Anybody who's going to join has already joined. They don't need the phone number at this point. So you've got a pretty big canvas now, so you can you know more clearly see things and and uh, when you're working with clients. Good question. Other um, other questions? You will notice a year age um, bar across the bottom. So I can take whatever this total is here, for instance, and if I switch to 2022, you can now see how it's it's uh, updating depending on the, the year selected. Or I can go up to 2026 or whatever, and you can see now it's mostly pension plans. And, and also you can, of course, see that the uh, expenses are changing. So that's how you look at the donut grass, you know, from year to year is uh, just by going through and, uh, you know, selecting the desired year. And you can see the it has both the year and the client's ages. If the client wants to view and play with this, is there any access for them? <laughs> no. However, this is a great question. What we are working on right now, uh, why am I not minimizing this? Let me get rid of that. Uh, what we're working on right now is a major enhancement to the My Vision of Life website. So let me go there. Uh, we're struggling a little bit with, um, with some of it, but I think we're getting closer. Um, the My Vision of Life website is designed for clients to go in and build their vision. So again, uh, the approach that I take, my, my view in all of this, is that, and you can see here, by the way, that I've got Bill and Sue, and uh, this is the about page, you know, what, we, what you see in VisionWorks, values, and also vision. So my point of view in planning is that the expert on what clients want to have and do in life is the client. The expert on how are we going to get you from where you are to where you want to be, you know, financial planning tactics and so on, that's our area of expertise. And so what we're able to do is, with my vision of life, is we're able to say to clients, go ahead, go in, build your vision, and then we can take this and import it into VisionWorks. 
We can also, by the way, start with a retirement plan, let's say in VisionWorks, and what we're able to do is we're able to um, export that. I'm going to switch to uh, the financial planning interface. Um, what we're able to do is we're able to uh, start off with a, a retirement plan as an example, and then we can actually export it to the My Vision of Life website. So we can give them the bare bones of their retirement plan and then invite them to go to the My Vision of Life website and start to add things, you know, add the kitchen renovation or whatever it might be. So we give clients the opportunity to work on their vision. What we're working on right now uh, is mounting the calculation engine on a server the client will not have access to financials, so won't be able to change portfolios or, you know, do anything about uh, retirement plans or anything like that. But this will have the output for net worth and income assets. So it will give the client the opportunity to go in and say, well, what would happen if we spent more on vacations or less on vacations or whatever we want to do? You know, this is what we always see. And then and then they can, when they play with that, that will update the financial forecast for them so they can start to see the impact. You know, if the financial forecast, if the income assets forecast looks okay, they'll be able to go in and say, what would happen if we spent more on vacations? So the whole idea, especially, you know, with this emphasis on life planning, is that we need to give them um, a sandbox so that they can go and play and, um, and, uh, you know, think more about the life they want to lead. And I'm hoping that in, in um, providing this, that your clients will start to get more engaged in, in, you know, playing with these lifestyle choices. You know, what would happen if we renovated the kitchen and, you know, how much could we afford to spend on it or what's the impact? If they make any changes like this, uh, you get a notification that they've been on the web and then if you go to import from web and import what they do, and notice you can import into a new solution, give it a name. When you do do the import, what happens is it will tell you exactly what the changes were that the client made. Does that answer your question okay? That was great. Uh, next question would be just, is there any way to track the historic uh, curves, net worth, you know, planning always seems to start at time zero. You don't get credit for all the good things you've done in the past. I, I just wonder if there's any way to look at that. We don't do that. Uh, that's become very popular. You know, uh, wh where were we a year ago? Where are we today? Where were we five years ago? You know, what's our progress been and so on. And we don't do that uh, for a whole host of reasons, not the least of which is that, um, what, whatever, wherever we were in the past, let me put it a different way. If you're working with software that says, how much income do you want in retirement? A hundred grand. And that doesn't change in the client's mind for whatever reason. Then, you know, how were, where were we five years ago relative to uh, our progress to having that hundred grand of income? That's great. But my point of view is, uh, people's wants five years ago in all probability have changed, setting aside the pandemic, but in all probability have changed. I know that my wants in life today uh, certainly look different uh, today than they did five years ago or 10 years ago. So the point of view we take is that, that people's wants change and really how we've done in the past is irrelevant because the name of the game is what are our wants today you know, what's our, what's our financial circum, what are our financial circumstances and are we, uh, you know, on course to achieving those wants? So I believe that planning is always looking forward uh, rather than looking back and seeing how we've done. I think that's a justification for, you know, the value you bring to the table, but I'm not sure that it's, um, that it's a real, um, you know, value add from a planning point of view, just my view. And again, it's because in our life model, what we're saying is 
our life wants today can be very different from what our life wants were five years ago. You know, it's not it's not a constant it's not a constant target. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. If we had a constant target that never changed, that would be different. But our our target changes all the time. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else with uh, questions? Anything at all? Okay. So this is a matter of just getting hands on, I think, and, and uh, playing with it um, and seeing, you know, how the different features work. But we're certainly very hopeful that by uh, you being aware of this, that it will be um, a, a much more uh, engaging approach in, to working with clients. I, I, I'm absolutely a believer that we need to sit down, help clients formulate what it is they want to have and do in life. I believe that visually driven approach that we spoke about on Wednesday, um, you know, where we have the icons to stimulate the thinking is uh, critical uh, in trying to flesh out the picture and then putting clients in the environment where we can explain to them the big picture implications of the path that they're on. We can show them the impact of certain financial planning tactics. Um, and, and most importantly, now that they can see the picture, give them the opportunity to, you know, play around. What if we did this? What if we did that? And, um, and that when we do that, we're really going to uh, get them engaged in the whole, uh, you know, concept of life planning. And most importantly, and this goes back to the question about how are we doing relative to our, you know, our goals from five years ago. Most importantly, I'm very much a believer that planning ultimately is not about the plan. I don't think there is one. I think that life is characterized by change, whether it's the world around us, what we're going through today, or whether it, it's our own, you know, wants in life that change. Um, my view is that ultimately planning is actually about mastering change. We all have to manage it, but uh, it's a matter of mastering it. I can remember doing a presentation to a group of accountants, and one of the accountants who I understood had a, a, a personality of being somewhat belligerent uh, raised his hand and he said, there's no point in planning. I have a client who had a hardware store and down the street a Home Depot open and this man was doing extremely well and all of a sudden, you know, his earnings collapsed. Everybody started going to the Home Depot. And what he failed to understand was, you know, we plan, sure, but mastering change in this case would be, so now what are you going to do? Do you own the building? Uh, are you going to keep your hardware store open because you started to lose a half a million dollars a year? Are you, uh, do you own the building? Are you going to turn it into a rental property and rent it to somebody who's in a completely different business? Uh, if you own the building, are you going to sell the building? Uh, are you going to go, you know, you know all the people, the, you're an expert in the hardware business, or are you going to go work for Home Depot? You know, what are the things, the options that are available to you in life? And let's create different what-if scenarios and try and understand what the implications of all the different options might be, because you clearly have to make a decision. Uh, so let's see what uh, would suit you, you would most like to do, feel comfortable with, but also understand the financial implications. So, you know, it's clearly about mastering change. It, it's something that we all have to do constantly. We're doing it right now. So I believe that ultimately that's the name of the game. And what we're really doing when we set up a life plan is we're saying, what are your wants at this moment in time? What are your financial circumstances? What are the things that you can do that will help you, uh, you know, get from where you are to where you want to be? But more importantly, what we're actually doing is building a decision-making model so that as we go through life, uh, rather than making decisions hoping for the best, we can actually model the decisions 
or the choices and see what the long-term implications would be uh, to help you make the most informed decision possible. And I believe ultimately that's really what planning is, is all about. There is no the plan. Uh, life changes too much for you know external reasons as well as internal ones. Any other questions? Is there any way to make the font bigger on the career total, all those sub points? Uh, no, and it's something that we struggle with. Part of the problem with it is um, uh, just uh, the screen real estate. Uh, so it's just an issue of, you know, when we um, had the donut graphs smaller and the font bigger than the donut graphs, you can see that the slice here would be hard if the donut graph were smaller uh, to be able to actually, you know, select slices or see them or whatever. Uh, same idea with the, the font. Things were off or outside the real estate that was available. So this is what just works. It's just, again, it's real estate. We had a similar problem, but tried to do a fix where we did a hover over where the font is maximized. I don't know if that's an idea, but. If you put, if you, if you run your mouse over a particular entry, you mean? Correct. Not a bad idea. I'll I'll look into that. Actually, over the actual like green circle there. Oh, oh, over here, or do you mean over the text itself? Uh, we did it for the graphics, but it could be done for the text ex itself too. I'll 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 speak to the programmer about that. So you're just saying if you if you hover over the donut graph, the whole donut graph plus text expands. No, just it would just have a box that would come out of your mouse from you hovering there, and it would just say career in much bigger font, 130. Yeah, that, yeah, that'd be over like the yeah. Oh, I see. If, if I'm over the green, which is career, then it would it would show something, or over other accounts plans, it would show something. A, a secondary oh, oh. box. Yeah, I I understand the idea. I'll talk to the programmer, see what she's able to do. Thanks for the suggestion. Anybody else? Okay, super. Thank you all for your time. And um, if you have any questions, you know, please uh, feel free to uh, give me a call. Let me just do a final check. No, nothing in chat. Okay. Uh, so if you have any questions, you know, please uh, give me a call or send me an email. Thanks and enjoy uh, your weekend.